All right, now for the next project. This is the year 2018 and my New Year's resolutions were to get things sorted out in my house and with my property and other things that I store for other organizations on my property. And one of the many things that was hanging out there that needed being done was to provide my local community band with a set of orchestra bells, which is basically a xylophone uh, with metal bars and put inside a flat wooden box with a cover and a carrying handle that you can carry around, sit on a stand, and play as the music requires. Uh, orchestra bells are quite expensive unless you buy the really cheap ones uh, with aluminum bars that dent it easily and so on. What I wanted was a good set of steel orchestra bells but at an affordable price and, uh, and a, a friend of mine from another organization actually had a uh, Slingerland glockenspiel which is a pretty high quality one and uh, he sold it to me for an affordable price but it's an unwieldy shape with the lyre frame, uh, which I think actually may be cast aluminum. It, I don't think it's steel. And then you've got these bars here, which I think are steel, and then the uh, or the rails, and then the actual bars, which are steel. And um, <clears throat> it came with one set of mallets. And I also bought a couple of other mallets um, for the for the bells in a couple of different hardnesses so there will be three options for our player whenever they need it <laughs> so it works and what I have to do is divest it from the lyre frame and build a uh, easily transportable wooden carrying case for it. And uh, that'll be the project of the day. The frame and rail part should be fairly easy because while all the bars are bolted to the rails using felt strips and bolts, the rails themselves mount with only a few screws to the frame and those should easily come off and the rest of it should remain its integrity pretty well although I suspect they may shift like a parallelogram without some sort of guidance so I want to take some measurements first and make sure I am able to keep these square okay just as some uh, alignment reference marks I've taken a 90 degree angle and put it along the inner bar marked that the mark there is going to be based on a 90 degree angle and then marked where it crosses the other one and then flipped it and done the same thing here 90 degrees off the inner bar and marked the outer angle did the same thing up here and here so that should give me some basic alignment I'm going to also measure some spider webs and dead bugs in here. It's been stored for a long time. I have to measure the distance between the bars, although I don't think that's that critical, but I think it's roughly a quarter of an inch. And I also want to make note that um, all the bars are marked on the front as to which note they are, and they're laid out like on a piano keyboard, so I should not have a problem uh, getting them reoriented to each other properly. And here it's a little easier to measure on the front. They are one quarter of an inch apart from other just about exactly. And uh, of course I had it arranged backwards before but the large bars I believe should be on the left per normal practice. If it, I'm going to mount it in a symmetrical box so if I got it backwards for some reason the player can just flip the box around and play it the other way if they prefer. And now I've got the rails and bars removed from the liar frame. And I've checked and verified that the mounting screws are just a plain old 832, which I should be able to get some new ones of the appropriate length pretty easily. 
and rummaging around in my junk box of hardware that I used to make cases a long time ago before I started using the more industrial uh, road case type hardware. These are more like lightweight suitcase type bits. Um, I have some corner reinforcement brackets. I have eight of those which will be needed and I have uh, a couple of uh, latches. I have both the keyed and unkeyed versions of these. Right now I'm going to use the unkeyed version but I can swap them out. And I have these uh, slide apart hinges. I figured I'd put three of them along the back just because it's a decent sized case. So once the case is open then it can be slid sideways, the lid can be slid sideways and disengage and totally come off. The one thing that I wish I had is uh, four of these I've got the nice rubber feet with the impregnated or embedded steel washers and I only have two left in my box of parts and one of them is still compliant and the other one is hard as rock. I think I'm going to have to find something else at the hardware store that will work for that. And uh, musical instrument cases are traditionally covered with uh, sort of a textured finish black cloth. Uh, I don't know what it is really. It's some sort of fabric. Maybe it has some vinyl in it. Don't know. But it's normally glued onto a wooden case. And I still have a, a big roll of this stuff. Plenty to cover this case. So there's no issue with case covering material. And as it turns out, all the mallets are uh, apparently a standard length and uh, they'll all fit within a box that's wide enough to fit the bells in this direction so I can have a little compartment off to the side to keep all the different mallets. It doesn't have to be very big, just two or three inches should be plenty of room. Alright, so I've worked out the dimensions of the case. The part with the bells is going to be 18 inches by 27 inches and then there will be a three inch wide compartment to the side of it for the mallets. The case will have main panels of quarter inch plywood or masonite, I'm not sure yet which. Um, there's going to be a center line which defines where the case breaks in half. It'll be centered and that'll the inner side of that will be one and a quarter inch from the center line, both sides. The bottoms of the bell bars will be above the center line so they'll be above the edge of the case when the case is open. That should prevent any uh, case strikes if being played from a low angle with the mallets. <clears throat> and the uh, rail on which the bells rest needs to be elevated above the bottom of the case by about a half an inch. Actually it only needs about a quarter but I'm going to give it a half inch. That makes all the other dimensions work out. And um, then I'm going to get some of those uh, formed decorative washers that kind of go like that. That's a, a side view of the washer. And then that allows you to have an external countersunk screw. that goes in and will th go through a hole in the spacer and thread into the rail with the 832 and um, those will be on the outside but because of the uh, those washers they won't catch on anything and if for some reason the hardware store doesn't carry those things then I'll just go back to using a regular button head machine screw or something for the uh, 832 attachment points. So I have all the other hardware, I just need to get feet and handles, regular luggage style handles, hopefully the hardware store carries those. I was having some trouble reconciling the uh, angles and positions of the rails on this layout. Uh, because they're like parallelograms and there are several different adjustments that all result in the bars being more or less straight with each other. 
but it's kind of awkward and I thought well the original arrangement was good and I want to keep that arrangement so I still have my liar frame and I just got a big piece of craft paper I could have used you know taped together sheets of other paper or newspaper or whatever um, and I just laid it down here and marked the center line and uh, which isn't necessarily the center of the holes by the way it's a little bit off because they skewed the uh, the rails a little bit to the left of the frame presumably because of the size of the bars and so then I just marked through with a pen here because it lays close to the paper and here I couldn't get a pen through so I just chucked up a drill that was about the same size as the hole and just lightly drilled down until it scuffed the paper up enough to leave a clear mark um, on the paper and from that I have a good pattern the other thing I'm going to do while it's laying down here is lay the rails back on and verify the outline so I'm sure I have the right size box So I'm just drawing a very crude line defining the outer dimensions here that it absolutely must be within those boundaries. so I've got them marked out here. I straightened out my crude lines with a straight edge. I've marked the holes. Oops, I forgot to make these a little clearer. So now I can verify the dimensions of my case and be sure it's straight on and with everything in the proper alignment when I mount the rails. Alright, I've refined my paper pattern a little bit. I added some extra marks for where the actual ends of the rails are, not just the holes. And um, where a center line should be and verified my outside dimensions as 27 by 18. That's outer dimensions for the bell area, but that's the inner dimensions of the box. <clears throat> and I've got some of this uh, select pine, something I always like working with for many of my projects. It's uh, almost perfectly straight, free of knots and weird unattractive or fragile parts, you know, the way you might get with a 2x4 or something. And it's always cut exactly to the right dimensions and it's sanded and smooth. All the angles are nice right angles. It's kind of a pleasure to work with. It's a little bit expensive, but to me it's worth it. Uh, this is a 3 quarter inch wide, or thick. A uh, 3 and a half inch wide and a 6 foot long. I've got a couple of these things to make sure I have plenty of material. And I also have, uh, I used to buy 4x4 pre-cut plywood, but the store this time had 2x4, um, uh, that's 2 foot by 4 foot pre-cut plywood. i got a couple sections of those. I'll be using one panel of this uh, for each of the two big sides of the case. It's not a decorative plywood. It's, um, it is a two good sides, but it's kind of an ugly color, but it won't matter. It's all going to be either painted or covered with fabric. Otherwise, it's a reasonable quality plywood. And I've worked out a few critical dimensions. I've got a dividing board of 0.75 inches, two outer boards of 0.75 each, a uh, 2.75 inch wide 
compartment to store the mallets and a 27 inch compartment for the bells that all adds up to 32 inches outer dimension in the long case size and then looking at the short case dimension it's 18 inch for the inside plus 2.75s for the top and bottom of the case that's 19 and a half I thought I might push it up to an even 20 but no it's 19 and a half as far as thickness I've got two panels of quarter inch each I'm going to have a half inch rail to set the or a uh, half inch spacer rather to set the rails on and that'll put the bottom of the bells or the bars right at the uh, one and a half inch point on a three inch tall case and um, that'll leave the bells exposed above the center line when the case is open and then uh, another inch and a quarter and then the quarter inch top comes to an even three inches so all that adds up all right all these boards are ripped down to three and a uh, sixteenth of an inch because after I assemble the frame for the box and put the outer panels on it I'm gonna cut it in half to make the top and bottom halves of the case and I want it to be three inches not uh, cutting out the sixteenth of an inch that the saw is going to take out so um, or actually uh, and I didn't mean a sixteenth it's a uh, an eighth of an inch just under an eighth of an inch so uh, <clears throat> I've got the two long panels I've got the two short panels and I've got one panel that's an extra half an inch longer than the short panels so I can kind of dado it into the uh, two long panels to make the separator between the bell compartment and the mallet compartment. I have to slot the two long boards about a quarter inch deep and three quarter inch wide for the center divider so it's going to be like a dado joint and for that I'm using my um, routing table which is also my jointer and uh, it's real noisy. All right, I've just test fit up the boards on the case verified that I still have the proper dimensions and uh, the centerpiece slots in nicely. Um, now because I'm going to cut this in half after it's assembled I have to remember that the saw blade will not be able to reach the spacer when I put it in so I need to cut that in half now uh, or I'll never be able to take the case apart once I start cutting it in half. There will always be this part in the middle that's inaccessible and that would be a big dough. <laughs> it's uh, got to be done now before I forget. Now I'm about ready to glue this guy up here. I've uh, decided to put some screws in the corner in addition to the glue. They're countersunk for the wood screws and the pilot holes and clearance holes for the shank are in there. Um, <clears throat> I've cut the separating section down by uh, just under a quarter of an inch basically sitting it on pieces of the plywood so uh, it's already set up for the countersink of the plywood on the uh, two big sides I won't have to cut it um, and then I've got some cardboard spaced up that will hopefully put a plywood on the uh, other sides should be just about perfect and now it's all glued up and the screws are snugged and I've uh, got it checked with my angle to make sure that it didn't skew during all that, it looks like it's dead nuts so a few hours from now I'll be able to uh, use my router to inlay the plywood into the two outer panels here 
then cut it in half and then it'll be a matter of um, attaching the fabric to the outside, painting the inside, then attaching the hardware, then attaching the uh, the bell liar components. Or not the bell liar components, but the bells and their rails. With the glue mostly uh, cured, I'm filling in the screw holes with wood putty. Or wood filler, actually. It's not a match for the wood, but it doesn't matter since it's going to get painted or covered. Alright, I've countersunk the the top and bottom so I can fit in the plywood and have it be flush. That's uh, true for both sides. Alright, so I've cut the panels to lay in and now they have to be glued up. I usually use uh, Gorilla Glue for something like this. Uh, but in this instance I may just use regular wood glue. And now both large panels are glued and clamped. Alright, after letting everything dry overnight. The box is a six-sided object now. And uh, I'm going to do just a little sanding along the edges here. A couple of places where the router bit went just a little deeper than I wanted it. Mostly the plywood's nice and flush. There's just a little bit, so I'm going to touch it up with my uh, belt sander. And uh, then it'll be ready to cut the case in half and paint and apply uh, outside covering. Okay, I'm ready to cut the box in half now. Got the fence set up and the blade set to the right height. box has been cut in half. I've sanded all the rough edges. I did have a small oops with the belt sander that just took a little dip in the wood here. Won't be a big deal once it's covered with fabric. It won't be that obvious. If I was doing some quality woodworking I'd have to, I don't know, patch that, fill it, or do something. But here paint and fabric covers almost all evils. So it'll be hinged. And then it'll end up being the box as originally laid out. Okay, so now I've got my template cut out. And guess what? It lays in there real nice. So I've transferred the rail hole patterns or positions to the wood and now I can figure out exactly where I want my rails to go or the uh, spacers to support the rails rather. Now I've cut my rail spacers. This one needs to be a little wider because the, uh, the hole pattern doesn't line up as much on a straight line. This one it does. I'm only going with a one inch wide spacer. And because I don't want to wait another three or four hours for regular wood glue to set up, I'm going to do this one with epoxy. I don't need that much of it. And the epoxy is now setting up. Give it about five or ten minutes. Okay, so uh, I've got the inner surfaces, the parts that will not be covered with fabric, painted. And I have to give it a few hours before I can start laying on the fabric. And as I usually do in the winter when I'm working on projects in the basement and I need to stain, varnish, paint, whatever, 
I set up two to four of my little oscillating fan heaters um, just to generally keep the area warmer than the rest of the basement and to keep some air flow going definitely helps and I should mention that I used black enamel for this as opposed to you know latex or something like that I didn't think that would be appropriate uh, this is oil based but uh, that doesn't have any bearing on its usability or anything and I only went a little bit past the corners because I'm going to fold the fabric over from the outside and it's going to get folded once onto the edge and once more over onto the inside on these surfaces and taken down approximately to the seam in the wood but it won't be exact and so I wanted to have the black fabric on the back uh, <clears throat> on the black paint and it won't be apparent where the fabric ends hopefully All right, and now for the fabric covering step. Got my roll of fabric out here, and it's kind of like wrapping a Christmas present, really. You have to make sure that there's enough fabric on all sides to wrap around the way you want it to go. And uh, there's a damaged area towards the edge of this, so I want to go a little bit further. Damaged area is about to here, so. It's more than enough there. I don't know if you can see it in the picture. It's gotten wet or something at some point. Anyway, and on the side, there's enough to go over in an extra couple of inches. So I need to cut along that side to have the same thing and then trim over there. And here's a step that I almost forgot. I was almost going to start gluing it up with the wrong side out, which would have had the ugly side facing the wood so I flipped that around I kneeled on that and got some sawdust from my knee on the wood at least that'll be under the bells have to be careful of that so a lot of people would use a spray adhesive on this and uh, I do that uh, on many of the cases but in reality, it's just as easy to use good old Elmer's wood glue on this kind of stuff. And uh, I think I always had the best success with that. The edges will never peel and so on, which I can't say is true for the spray-on adhesives. Uh, you get the same kind of bond you would get with you know, wood to wood, and it doesn't let loose. So, um, first thing I have to do is mark where the corners are. Uh, on here so I've got a frame of reference and then I usually spread the uh, glue on the wood not on the fabric but I have to do some pre-cuts on here probably I'll work that out here in a second and you can't really apply the glue fast enough before it starts to set up if you don't if you use the nozzle you just have to pour a glob of glue out I always use a piece of wood to act as a squeegee to spread it out and then after uh, spreading the glue finely, squeegee style over the whole large size of uh, large side of the wood, I flip it over and stick it on the fabric. doing here is rolling the air bubbles out. Once I've got it tacked down I go back and lift it up. Now it's got some glue transferred to the wood. I know this isn't showing up in the video too well. I'll put the camera up here and see if I can make it better. So I peel it out or peel it up and then work it back with a also be done just by pushing it with the fingers.
So now that side's down, and I have to flip it over and start working the uh, the sides up.
All right, so I've got that one end folded over and onto the inside. You can see where the glue has flowed out of there. That'll uh, turn transparent and I may touch it up with a little bit of the black paint once it's done. And I put a handful of staples in here which I'll pull out later. And uh, the holes will barely show. Those aren't strictly necessary. It's possible to do that with tacks and things, but usually the fabric will pull back unless you do something like that. Alright, I've done one of these now. Sort of a tedious process. I can really only stand to bend over and work on the floor for the 45 minutes or so it took me to do this whole thing. Oops, and I missed a little spot. I have to fix that quickly. It's pretty well mashed down all the way around. There's a couple of little air bubbles that I have to touch up here. And when there are air bubbles or little spots like this that I missed on the corner because I cut the fabric incorrectly, those can always be touched up by putting a little patch over applying glue and pushing it down and it the patch almost disappears it's fairly effective and I will pull these staples out once it's uh, dried up a little bit more that's mostly just because I'm pulling some tension as the fabric comes up around the edges looks like I got a couple of little touch-ups in the corners that one and this one but I still need to lay patches into those. And I'll still do that yet before I give it a break for the night. Tomorrow I'll have to do that one. Well, I forgot one thing before I started gluing all this up was um, I'm putting these little rubber feet on both the bottom surface as well as on the back surface where the hinges are depending on which way you lay it down. and. When I put them on the back surface, it's no problem. There's lots of wood for the screw to go into. But when I put them on the bottom surface, it's only going through that piece of quarter-inch plywood, which isn't really enough. So I'd like it to be about three times that thickness. So I've got some more quarter-inch plywood. I'm chopping it up into eight little pieces. I'm going to epoxy it in place in the corners, dab a little black paint on it, and uh, that should do the trick. So um, I was kind of fumbling through the fabric application process for the first half that I did and pondering it a little bit overnight before doing the second half now. I was uh, trying to remember how I used to do it when I used to do this all the time. And uh, if looking at the frame of the box here, and this being the shorter side, and I usually try to put the foldovers on the shorter side, um, <clears throat> I end up cutting the fabric goes out this way and out this way and um, I've got this one section here which is for the vertical here and it's cut right even with the edge and then at the fold line I cut it back at a uh, 45 degree angle that'll basically go here and then it's got another fold line so this here goes down along this edge straight down and then I cut off whatever excess is there and this dash line here is what falls along the bottom of this edge so with that on there then I cut the flap here with a flap with tapered edges this part will fold up here and then this part will fold over and wrap around the corner here and be glued to the uh, short side and that covers up the seam and then it's got a short straight section that's for laying over here and this is not tapered if it was tapered it would end up being tapered seam against tapered seam and there could be a gap there so I make that part square so it basically does a square cover over there and then I keep the same line here and taper it off cut it here and this panel then folds on the inside here and this part here then 
folds up and ends up laying right along here to again close the gap there so there's no wood showing through and then this part here gets uh, cut off wherever it ends up meeting the bottom seam. So I think that's the way I used to do it. We'll see if I can make it happen this time. Alright, well I've got my little corners in there and uh, I gave the whole painted part of this another coat um, partially because I'd kneeled on the middle of this when I was cutting the fabric for it yesterday and um, managed to rub off a bunch of outer layer skin from my knee onto the paint and couldn't get it off so to cover up that blemish I just said heck I'll paint the whole thing again and of course I got the fabric covering uh, on the other half now just waiting for that to dry and um, as you can see here places where the staples were are visible if you look closely but they're not very apparent the staples come out pretty well and uh, that technique works effectively I guess alright so everything's painted and fabric covered Some of them have some dirt on them from the floor that needs to be wiped off yet, but they're basically done in that regard. So there's the overall box, both halves of it. And because it was made out of a single box, everything lines up very nicely. The only real flaw is along the side here. There's a bit more of a gap than I would like due to some clumsy uh, sanding. This side fits together real nice, but what are you going to do? I didn't realize it was that bad or I would have patched it. So I think the next thing to do is to uh, test fit the bells and make the uh, holes in the for the mounting rails based on the pattern I made earlier. Okay, I've marked the hole locations with pencil, and I gotta get some baseboard to drill through so it won't tear the fabric coming out. All right, uh, clearance holes, wide clearance holes for a number eight bolt have gone through all these locations. I've got the uh, number eight machine screws with the recessed heads, and some of the plated steel decorative washers to go on the outside. Okay, there are the, uh, the screws from the bottom. And the bell's laying in there from the top. <clears throat> the rails are sitting up on their spacers here at both ends. Gotta straighten out the felt a little bit. That guy needs some adjustment. I've moved the felt around on this from the position it's been in for a long time and I think that's caused some of them to be a little bit tight and sounding a bit dead. If I actually push the felts back to where they were it would probably ring. These will need some adjustment but basically it's all working. So now I've got the three hinges on it and they're the kind that once you open the case a little ways you can 
slide the top sideways and the whole cover will disengage on the hinges. And now the latches are on. I've got some handles, but I wasn't too thrilled with the ones I got from the hardware store. So I've ordered some better ones from, uh, from Ohio Travel Bag, the place I always used to buy this hardware. And um, I think they'll be better quality and also they'll be black to match the case instead of brown like the ones from the hardware store. And I've got these steel corner reinforcements and because they're stamped out of uh, steel or you know any metal really but in this case steel they're going to have a rounded corner which means you can't put them over the totally square corner here I need to just take a little bit off with a file or in this case I had a Dremel milling bit in my Dremel tool that made quick work of that so I've got the corners on on the bottom edge and uh, I've also put little rubber bumper, actually they're sold as rubber bumpers, I use them as feet. Uh, I had to open up the hole in the sheet metal corners to accept the larger screw. So one screw holds that corner of the corner reinforcement down as well as holding the foot on. And now I've got the corner reinforcements on the front edge. So that part's done. Now I need to flip it over and put feet on the bottom surface. And now I've got the bottom bumpers on all four corners. So here's a, a bit of an overview of the case. Came out pretty good. There's fairly few blemishes on the outside. I still don't have the handles on it, of course. Now the alignment of the top is so far just maintained by the stiffness of the three hinges and these little uh, orientation pins on the latches, which go down into there. Um, if I ever experience any trouble with the lid shifting, I can put a couple more alignment pins in the corners, but right now that'll do the trick. And there's no need to have any uh, restraints for the lid because it'll never be used with the lid on it. It's um, going to be always have the lid taken off right after it's opened. And uh, all my mallets go nicely in this compartment on the left. So it should be pretty good. Um, I don't think there will be any issue with playability with it the way it is. And it, that's a fairly economical set of orchestra bells. I don't know if the range is as large as they normally are, um, but for the couple hundred dollars I paid for the old Slingerland Glockenspiel and whatever I have in this case, uh, you know, about twelve dollars worth of wood a little paint, some fabric I had already, some hardware I had already, maybe five dollars worth of screws and rubber feet. Um, fairly economical set of orchestra bells. I'll take another video of this once I get uh, the handles attached. I decided to give a second coat of black paint to the lid. It just comes out looking a lot nicer. So here's the uh, the Hillman branded plastic handle, which I thought looked fine, had a good shape, seemed decent quality. It was really these uh, really cheap looking brackets at the end that I just was displeased with. I thought they were just really crappy. And so I went back to Ohio Travel Bag in Solon, Ohio, who is... Uh, the supplier of all the other hardware on this case. Their 
stuff is sold through hardwareelf.com, which um, I believe is really the same company as it says here, Hardware Elf on the same label, Ohio Travel Bag. So apparently that's like their retail or mail order arm, I suppose, more accurately. Their mail order branch, mail order division. And the handle I selected is their H12A. And here they are in comparison. Pretty much the same size handle. This uh, one from Ohio Travel Bag is slightly wider, but otherwise it's pretty much the same design. It doesn't have the fake stitching that the uh, one from Hillman has, which I wish it had. doesn't seem to make much sense to have this ridge around there if you're not going to pretend that it's leather and put stitching on it, the way these guys do, but oh well. Anyway, the uh, hardware here seems definitely more substantial and better made as far as the brackets go. Plus, it's the same uh, nickel-plated steel finish that all the other hardware has instead of this... Uh, brass finish on whatever metal it is. So definitely better looking. And there is the finished product. I don't get it in the viewfinder yet. There it goes. I've made arrangements to take this um, set of newly made orchestra bells down to Chicago to um, believe it's called Century Mallet Instrument Service which uh, is basically the f a former company that used to make mallet percussion instruments such as xylophones and marimbas and so on and now it's about the third uh, generation of people running it but they're the Chicago area's go-to place for professional um, mallet instrument repair tuning service and uh, everybody seemed to recommend them to go and get these bells tweaked and the felts replaced and if there's any intonation issues they might be able to touch it up a little bit so probably in about a week's time I'm going to get those uh, bells tweaked up by that outfit and it should be ready to rumble <laughs>